so, so my cohort and I, uh, we, we grew up in Germany. And uh, one thing that we remember very well is that the older generation in the you know, late 70s and early 1980s when we were kids was still talking a lot about the hyperinflation from the 1920s. This got us into thinking that, you know, there could be something systematic about this, that basically different generations have different experiences, different, you know, uh, events and different macroeconomic history that they have, have seen, and that, that this might influence what people think is going to happen in the future. Is it the case that if you ask someone about their expectations, let's say about next year's inflation or inflation five years from now, that they are somehow systematically uh, you know, influenced by the experiences that they accumulated over their lifetimes. We basically wanted then to, to see whether we could test this hypothesis in a systematic fashion uh, by using, um, you know, appropriate data for that. And uh, this was basically a, a multi-step process, right? So the, the first problem we faced was we realized we need a pretty long data set. And we found that the uh, Michigan Survey of Consumers has data that goes back to the 1950s. And so we settled on a relatively parsimonious model where we characterize people that are in those surveys. They basically look at the experienced inflation data and they look at two key properties of it. One is what is the mean, the average inflation rate that they have seen. And the second is the degree of persistence. So if you see a high inflation rate today, does it somehow make it more likely that the inflation rate will be very high tomorrow? Our finding in our research was that the way people form expectations about the future depends on how old they are. If you look at a young person, they tend to focus a lot on what they have seen in you know, the last 10, 20 years, and they extrapolate from it into the future about the economy, about you know, corporate profits, about what you can earn from the stock market. And we were you know, delighted to see that some colleagues of ours, they basically picked up on this work and decided to incorporate expectation formation um, of that kind into their economic models. Some colleagues, for example, build an asset pricing model, a model designed to explain asset prices in financial markets, with individuals within the model that form expectations in a way that's consistent with our findings. That's the ultimate satisfaction, right? That's, that's as academics, that's what we want at the end. We want to we want to do something that at the end has some impact and uh, you know, changes what uh, people do. I, th I think uh, you know, University of Michigan, Ross, is a place where you can really get access to faculty. We really care about our students. Our priority is really good collaboration between students and faculty. And I think this makes us quite distinct.